In the previous video in this series, I created an Azure virtual machine to run my server-based workloads. Now I want to create a web application, but I don't really want to deploy servers, configure web servers, set up load balancing, and do all the things that have to be done to take care of server infrastructure. My name is Eric Boyd. I'm an Azure MVP, a Microsoft Regional Director, and the founder of ResponsiveX, where we help customers run workloads and develop applications in Azure. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can run your web applications in Azure without having to manage infrastructure using Azure App Service. Now, as a developer, I don't really want infrastructure getting in the way of my workflow and how I develop. And I'm going to show you how you can work like you normally do, using the tools you know and love to use. Azure App Service is a platform as a service in Azure that is essentially a web server as a service. I want to create and deploy a web application to Azure and Azure App Service, but instead of doing it from the Azure portal, I want to do this from my development IDE. And I don't want to leave my IDE. The great news is Azure has SDKs in many languages and extensions to popular IDEs such as Visual Studio, Visual Studio Code, Eclipse, IntelliJ, and more. Today, I'd like to create a web application and deploy it to Azure from Visual Studio. Now, I'll switch to Visual Studio. I'm using Visual Studio 2022, which is the latest version of Visual Studio, but everything I'm showing here today is available in previous versions of Visual Studio. I'll create a new web application, and I'm going to create an ASP.NET Core web application. I'm going to click ASP.NET Core Web App, and then press the Next button. I'm going to name this Getting Started with Azure.Web, and then name the solution, and press the Next button. Lastly, I'm going to configure my web app on the additional information screen. I'm going to select the .NET 8 framework since it has long-term support, but you could also select .NET 7 or even .NET 6. I will leave the remaining settings set to their defaults and press the Create button. This is going to create our new ASP.NET Core web application. At this point, Visual Studio is not doing anything specific or special for Azure. It's just creating our ASP.NET Core web application. We can press F5 on our keyboard or press the play button and debug it locally. We could web deploy it to servers in our data center. There's nothing about this Visual Studio project that is specific to Azure. What I want to highlight is the integration that IDEs like Visual Studio have for Azure. In the Solution Explorer, if I right click the project and select Publish, this will launch the publishing dialog. It will ask me where I want to deploy this web app. In this list, we see the traditional options. We see folders on our file system. We see FTP and IIS. At the top, we see new and modern options like Azure and Docker Container Registry. I'm going to select Azure and press the Next button. In the specific target options, I see Azure App Service for Windows and Linux, as well as options for containers to Azure Container Apps, App Service Container, and Azure Container Registry. There is even an option to deploy to Azure Virtual Machines. I'm going to select Azure App Service for Windows. I'll then select the account that I want to use in the upper right-hand corner, which will populate the list of subscriptions I can deploy to. I'll select the subscription we're using today and click the Create New button to create a new Azure App Service. I'll name this web app, and then I click New next to Hosting Plan to configure the physical characteristics of this web server as a service. I'm going to pick the location, and then I'm going to choose the size. Now we have several cryptic sizes to choose from. They are split out by tiers. We have the B tier, which is basic, the S tier, which is standard, and the P tier, which is premium. They each have different features within those tiers. There are sizes, different performance characteristics, the number of CPU cores, and the amount of RAM is different. At the very top, you'll see a couple of non-cryptic sizes. You'll see free and shared. Azure App Service is one of the services that you can run always free. You can run 10 Azure App Services in this plan for free. Choosing the free option is going to work just fine for us today, so I'm going to select that option. If you want to learn more about the free Azure Services, I'd encourage you to check out the video in this series titled Understanding Your Free Account. Now I'm going to press Create. 
Visual Studio is talking to Azure via the REST management API. It's doing the same thing as the Azure portal. It's asking Azure to create a resource group and to create an app service plan, which is essentially the web server as a service. And just like we would do in IIS, we're asking Azure to create a web app inside the web server. When this is done, it will return to Visual Studio to the publishing dialog. I will press the finish button and it will create a publishing profile populated with all of the configuration for me to deploy this to Azure App Service. I'll close the publish dialog and all I have to do now is press the publish button and it will deploy my web app to Azure App Service. Before I do that, I'm going to click on this URL. This will open it up in a browser because I want to show you the page that you will see if you create a web app but don't deploy anything to it. It essentially says, welcome to Azure App Service. Here's guidance for the deployment center. Here are quick starts. Let me help you get something deployed. But we know all we have to do is press this publish button and Visual Studio will package this up and web deploy it out to my Azure App Service. We are going to watch this and it will be pretty quick. So I'm going to go back to my browser, refresh that page, and we will see this file new ASP.NET Core web application deployed out to Azure. Back in Visual Studio, if you click the ellipses in the upper right corner of the hosting box, you'll find several options for working with your Azure App Service, including attaching a debugger for remote debugging and starting a profiler. If you select Open in Azure Portal, it will take you directly to your App Service resource in the Azure Portal. In the Azure Portal, you can manage and work with your Azure App Service like any other resource. For your real-world production environments and your team-based development projects, I'd encourage you to create continuous integration and delivery pipelines. Using DevOps tools like Azure Pipelines or GitHub Actions or another build and release management tool. Having said that, the integration in the Visual Studio IDE is fantastic and is super useful if you're just getting started and just trying to create something quickly. Share it with others. Maybe test an API for a mobile app that you're building. This is a great way to do it. In the next video of this series, I'm going to show you how you can use the SQL database service for your relational application data. Before I wrap up, I'd like to invite you to join me at our weekly Azure Live Q&A session. During the 30-minute session, I will host an interactive and live Q&A to answer your Azure questions.